Larry Roberts. And I'm Sarah Losey, and this is Branded, your comprehensive guide to creative branding. And on this episode of the podcast, we have a co-host. <gasps> Hi, Sophie. Her name is Sophie. She's my little teacup. She used to be teacup. Now I think she's like one of those oversized coffee mugs. But uh, <laughs> ch- ch- Chihuahua. Sophie is 11, and um, for some reason today, she's being super high maintenance. Like her anxiety is just kind of off the charts, and she just wants to be held. So, uh, Sophie's going to join us for this episode of the podcast. Hopefully, that's cool with everybody. Can I? Can I go get Kevin and just hold him? Um, I I would like to see that. That would be interesting because seventy pound pit bull. Yeah, Kevin weighs like a million, and uh, he would eat Sophie in one bite. I actually, I brought them to the vet yesterday and Kev, Kevin lost three pounds and Harvey gained 10. And I don't know what's going on. Harvey eating all of Kevin's food is what's Apparently. going on. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Apparently. yeah. Cause it's, it's funny. Cause uh, Sophie doesn't get down uh, and roam around much on her own these days. Cause she's, like I said, she's a little older and um, the, with, with, uh, Oh God, where'd he go? Oh God. Oh. Where's Opie? <laughs> with, with Opie in the house now. And he's, um, we'll say 13 weeks old. Well, he's about 13. He's just, dude, I've, <laughs> I've never seen a dog with this much energy, this thing. And I mean, I know puppies have energy, but no, yeah. you, 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 you don't get it. You don't, you don't <laughs> effing get it. I promise you. Cause this cat, he hits a gear that is just next. Uh, he just, it's like, it's like a, a, a pinball machine. And he's the ball, but it's like on steroids. I mean, he is just literally everywhere and he does not stop for like three hours. And he's bouncing and jumping and springing and stepping and running and jumping. Dude, it's in freak. It's the most ins- I've had a lot of dogs in my time. This cat right here, and I I don't know what he's chewing on, but he's chewing on something here in the studio. Looks like it's just one of my bags, which is cool. But dude, it's it's just the next level. So um, I can't put Sophie down because he will just irritate the all uh, you know the daylights out of her. So I got I got to hold Sophie. So that's why we have a, a, a bonus guest with us today. We're good with it. Hey Sophie, right. how do you feel about branding? Great oh. ideas, great ideas. <laughs> I think she snorted a little bit. She's like, ah. she did. No, that's yeah. you know, I yeah. it's a great insight. It's great insight. Yeah, she snorted a little bit. So, but anyways, here we are, man, with this episode. Um, we are a week removed from Babs, or for those that aren't initiated, the Badass Business Summit. And uh, at said summit, Sarah gave a talk on how to pitch to be on a podcast. And we thought that'd be a great episode. So uh, we're going to be talking about how to position yourself and how to pitch yourself uh, to get on podcast and not just any podcast, but a podcast that will, did you hear the way I said that podcast? Pod? Am pod- I from- it's your podcast. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. You know? it's a podcast. Uh, but <laughs> so how you would get on a podcast that would complement your brand and, and and really do something to help you boost your brand. So this one's going to be primarily Sarah uh, with me uh, kind of heckling a little bit. So we're going to see how it goes. Doesn't have to be just me. You do this too. <laughs> no, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's it's funny because we actually, you and I, every week or so, we go through the list of pitches that we get for branded. Yeah. And those, a lot of those. No offense if y'all are listening, which you're probably not, based on what you pitched us. Um, <laughs> a lot of those are like examples I used at in my presentation at Babs because they're just so, so bad. Yeah, I, I saw the F word forming on your lips right there. So we'll let that slide. But uh, they, 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 they are. They're I would rough. Never curse in front of Sophie. Oh well, that's she appreciates that. Dude, look at her. She's look. She's now that I'm holding her. Now that I'm holding she's her, she can barely hold her eyes open. She's just. Oh. Like, oh, but if I put her down, she's gonna go ballistic. So, um, anyways, uh, so yeah, we we do. We go through the pitches that we get on Podmatch because we are avid Podmatch users. Uh, once again, the Alex San Filippo fan club. We are the foundation Hi, of said we fan love club. You. But it's amazing to see some of the pitches that we get on there. We got one that just said, hey. (laughs) Y'all, this ain't AOL Instant Messenger. Yeah, yeah, ASL. ASL, please. Uh, So bad. (laughs) But I actually, it's interesting because just yesterday, I was talking to one of my clients and he asked me, like, I need to come up with a standard pitch I can send to podcasts. And I'm like, no, you don't. He's like, no, you don't know. Like for like 
pod match and stuff, just a standard one that I can just send that tells them who I am and about me. No, you don't because we don't care who you are. We don't care about you. And I feel bad saying this because it sounds really rude and it sounds it's, really it's, mean. It's, it's, it's only slightly aggressive. Yeah, but yeah. it's the only way I can say it, honestly, because it's so true. And that's what, like, at Babs, I talk about this and I know I'm just going to, no one's going to like me there. Everyone's going to be like this bitch. But it's, <laughs> we don't Part care. Like, you and I go through dozens of pitches and if all you're telling us is about you we just go right past it because it's, it's so true that we don't care who you are and that's not to say like once we bring you on the show we don't want to hear about you and your stories we 100 percent do but that's not what we're looking for, for from a pitch sure and i i can confidently say all their shows are the same and I quote him all the time, but Joe Salci, High Stacking Benjamins, he said in one of his keynotes at FinCon, the only responsibility you have as a podcast host is to your listeners. And I bring that up because when we're reading pitches, we're reading them from like what is going to have the most value for our listeners. We aren't like, okay, what's going to get us the best sob story or what's going to put you like this guest on the highest pedestal? Like that's not what we care about. Right. What what is going to benefit our guests? So what we're looking for in these pitches is the answer to that question. And it's so rare that we get that. Yeah. And and if you have a brand, that brand ideally has a value proposition attached to it. So when you're trying to get on podcasts to grow your business, grow your brand and grow your thought leadership, then why would you not lead with that value proposition? People think like I even I had a meeting with somebody. She's missing the conference. So she wanted to um, kind of pick my brain about what I'll be talking about. And she's like, can I pitch to you? And you tell me if you would let me on your show. And it's sure. This is not this isn't putting me on the spot at all. Like, yeah, right. Right. All right. All right. Are you prepared to get your feelings hurt? And she gives me her pitch. And it's a beautiful story about what she's been through. And I felt bad, but I had to be like, no. That's, if that was your pitch, I wouldn't put you on my show. And I, it sounds kind of like, uh, what's the like pretentious, I pretentious, guess? I don't know. Arrogant. Yeah. It, and it really does. Bitchy. I know. I'm arrogant. sounding like, oh, I'm a, I'm a nice person, people. <laughs> I am a nice person. I promise I'm not coming off like it. But we'll hear your story on the show. But I want to know what the value in that story is that my audience is going to hear and walk away with something that they can do. Right. And I don't need to hear your story to to know that. And if you're if I'm going through this list of like dozens and it's a really long story, I'm sorry, but I'm not reading that whole thing. I'm skimming it yeah, to try to find there's the value. Nothing, there's nothing worse than a wall of text, mm -hmm. right? Right. We click on the profile. We click on the opportunity. They've reached out. They said, hey, I'd love to be a, a guest on your podcast. And you look at it and it's literally just a wall o text. And and it's all about them. Yeah. And and I don't, I don't even know what it's about because I it's always true. click off. I just I just I, I jump ship right away. Yeah. One of one of the examples I use in that presentation, if anyone wants the slide, just shoot me a message or an email. But one of the examples I use is one that is a wall of text. And I put it up and I say, what's wrong with this pitch? And I don't know what their answers are going to be. But my answer is I have no idea because I didn't read it because it was just too long. Right, right. And I feel like the there's a few things that people think they need to put in a pitch to a podcast. And it's like they're, everything they would talk about, like their whole story everything they've accomplished, their whole resume. Um, <laughs> people put their follower counts, which I feel is a little like weird. Well, I mean, me. that, there's some pre-programming that goes with that, you know, because the, a lot of times they think that if you don't have an audience, yeah. then people aren't going to want to have you on their show. But in all honesty, the vast majority of podcasts that are out there, their audience looks very, very similar to yours. So the, the whole Instagram following and Facebook follow all that, not really all that relevant in all honesty. It's what's the value that you can provide. Yeah. I mean, I've, there's been shows that I produce that will have big name guests and it does fine. We have a no name guest with a really great story and it blows up because it's about the content. 
there's all of these things that people put in it and it's all, I have done this and this and I've accomplished this and I've managed to bring, to do this in my business. And that's all really great for you. But what does that mean for me? What does right. that mean for my listeners? Are you just going to get on my show and just brag about what you've done? Or are you going to teach my listeners to recreate something that you've done? That's how what they, I'm looking How can for. they achieve the same level of, of expertise that you potentially have in this niche? Exactly. And there's like a few things like don't include your resume. Don't include your sob story or whatever your story is. Um, we'll hear it on the show if you get on the show. Right. But what you want to include is a very brief introduction. I usually don't even have an introduction. If I, I pitch without an intro. And if they want to click to my profile, they'll get my intro. But right. that's not what's going to grab their attention. But having if you're going to do an intro, very, very brief, like less than a sentence with just I am this person and this one little qualifier of why I'm valid as a guest. And then something that's either a connector or a hook. This is the part that people miss or they every, do it wrong. Every, everybody, and here I am, you see me leaning into my microphone. My because we get so mad well, about it. Well, well yeah, I, I get, I get mad that. about it too, but at the same time, I have a dog between me. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not as close to my mic as I typically am. So you, you see me leaning in and trying to really make sure that I'm, I'm heard. But at the same time, uh, that hook is absolutely critical. Yes. And people come at you and they don't have a hook. They don't have something that will grab your attention. And they hit you with all of their 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 history, mm -hmm. their 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 work history, like essentially their resume. Yeah. And we we don't want a resume, right? We're not, we're not hiring you. We're just looking to have you as a guest on the podcast. Yeah, we want to know that you have things to teach and that you have you have a giving personality. We don't want because people look at podcasts and guest opportunities as marketing opportunities, and that's not what it is. And if you're going into it with a mindset of like, I want to sell something or I want to promote something, you're going in with the wrong mindset and your pitch will tell us that and we won't have you on the show. We want you to come on with a mindset of I have something to share and I have information to give. I have value to give. And I, I'm saying this in a kind of angry way because it frustrates me and I'm saying it <laughs> in a way that I sound really mean. No, but I, I love the passion. I love the passion because that's why I quit. My last podcast, Yes. you know, my last podcast was called You're the Boss, mm -hmm. and it was for entrepreneurs and founders of entrepreneurial uh, endeavors, but they would come on and they weren't telling their story. They weren't sharing value. They were pitching their their profession, their business, their book, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. may be. They were pitching. They were selling my audience, not sharing knowledge with my audience. And that is so huge. There's such a huge difference there. Yes. Like, we want to know that you're bringing something of value and we have something that we can learn from you. We have something that our audience can take away. And it's funny. You, um, I, I think you mentioned books. We were at a different event. I think it was the e women speakonomics. And some, one of the speakers said, um, podcast hosts love authors. And I'm saying they're like, no, we don't. No, no, we don't. No, we no, we, don't. We, we, we do love authors, but we don't love authors because we don't want to necessarily promote your book. We are and, not a promotional outlet for your book. We're a promotional outlet for the story and for the value propositions in your book. Yes. But we're not here to sell your book. Yeah. we. The reason we don't like authors is because a lot of them answer questions like, oh, well, that's in the book. So you're not offering value. And I mean, I know I like I plug my book as much as I can. I'm proud of it. And I like I like to talk about it. But when I do it, I still answer the question. I'll say like, oh, yeah, you know, I talk about that in my book. And I say, here is the value he, like this. This is what I like almost verbatim. What was in my book? I am telling you. And I think the fear with authors is that if they give the things away, no one will buy their book. Because it's like, well, you already got all the value. Podcast episodes are 30 minutes. How short is your book that you can give it all away in 30 minutes? And I said, right, but I'm also, I, 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 was, I was muted. So I'm a, I'm a real, po I'm a podcast professional. I swear. I mean, no, but what I was doing was I was looking up my old podcast, 
which is called You're the Boss, mm -hmm. which a lot of people were looking for and they were listening to. And, and 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 people were coming on the show. And the reason I quit it is because they were using me as an outlet, as, yep. like a sales outlet. Yeah. They were looking to me and my podcast as an opportunity to sell their book or sell their services. And that's not what it's about. Podcasting has evolved. It's mm -hmm. totally different now than it was three years ago, two years ago, one year ago. It's completely different. And now it's all about delivering value-based content yeah. for the listeners. And if you're on a podcast, guess what? The host is looking for that value proposition. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so counterproductive too when authors or really anybody, when they refuse to actually give the full information, they just give like just enough to make you want to do it, but not enough that you could do it yourself. You have to like have them do it for you. And it's counterproductive because if you tell me how to do it, you are proving right there that you know how to do it. Right, right. And I could go learn it and try and give it several attempts until I almost get it right and waste a lot of time. Or I can just hire you to do it. And I would only hire you if I know and I trust that you know what you're doing. And sure. I will not know that unless you tell me how to do it. So, Sarah, give us that structure. What is the structure that a good pitch is composed of? Yeah. So the first thing, like I said, very, very, very brief bio. The second thing is the connector or the hook. And I feel like hooks we talk about a lot. Hooks are, the, are what grabs that attention and really makes them like, okay, I want to read on. But the connector is a little different. And you can use both. You can use either. But I definitely recommend you use one of them. And the connector is just the piece that shows that you did your homework. You know what this show is. And we've gotten these that do the opposite because they'll say, oh, I listened to your last episode with blank and I loved when they talked about this. And we know you only listened to that last episode. And that's not <laughs> even what we talked about. That's the funniest thing is when you get these pitches, they go, oh, I was listening to episode... And it's literally the last episode. It's so you always know, the last episode. You, you know they clicked on it. They listened to 30 seconds, maybe, and then try to tie in their pitch to that one particular episode. Yes, we just got one, and I use this in my slides. It was, I loved your episode with uh, PT talking about the future of content creation. And I just stopped reading because I'm like, PT came on to talk about taxes. Right, right, right. Get, like, get it right if you're going to use that. So that is not the connector you want to use. I When I pitch, I pitch to a lot of shows about public speaking because I talk about storytelling sure. and the power storytelling has when it comes to speaking on any, any outlet. And a lot of the times it's about like getting past the fear. So I'll talk about my own fear. I'll pitch saying like, I, um, I love that this is what you talk about because this is something I've been struggling with myself and I would love to share my steps for how I've gotten past it. And here are my strategies that I've used. And I'm giving those strategies. I'm giving those steps in the pitch, not in so much detail that it's a super long thing, but I'm just very briefly listing them. And that is what we mean by a connector. How do we know that you understand our audience? How do we know that you understand what our show is about? You need to connect whatever you're talking to, to uh, talking about to the show or to the host. And then you, the last thing you want is to actually state the value. And you can do this in two ways. Sometimes I just list like, here's what um, I would like to share. Like, I here are my three steps or here's whatever. Um, but I've even positioned it as goals. Like, my goal would be for your audience to understand this or your audience to be able to do this right away. Well, see, and I love that because you say goals. Many times podcasters, especially if they're not experienced, have a hard time understanding what a value proposition is. So if you frame that value prop as a goal, that makes it much more accessible to a wider audience. Yeah. It's, it's kind of just putting it back into layman's terms. Yeah. Yeah. And I have so many pitches that I send out and do they all get picked up? Absolutely not. But a lot of them do. And I've even had hosts read my pitch on their show. 
Mm -hmm. if I'm talking about pitching or I'm talking about being a good guest because they want to just like double check like did she did she actually do this like is she drinking her own Kool-Aid and they'll go back and read it and they'll be like oh no that's exactly what you did yeah yeah and just the fact that they're reading that on the show is proof that it worked because I am on the show (laughs) and sometimes they've been bad like I mean or sometimes they haven't been picked up sometimes like I've missed the mark. I I pitched in person, not on like a, a, a website. I pitched in person to a show that does not accept guests. It's a one person show. Okay. And I'm just like, oh my God, I have a great guest for you. And I'm just going on. This was before I actually learned how to pitch. I think it was the same event that I accidentally got on Sacking Benjamins. Um, but I'm pitching and he's just like staring at me. He's like, have you ever listened to my show? I'm like, yep. no. Yeah, that's no, huge. I haven't. Huge. But I was so embarrassed. And for the, it was Sam Parr um who huge name in podcasting sure super respectable dude and i'm just pitching him sounded like an idiot and he's like yeah we don't bring on guests it's just us i'm like well if you change your mind yeah if if you start doing guests i would love to be one that'd be that'd be great yeah i'm like i'm so sorry please forget you ever met me that's hilarious. i'm sure he did it's hilarious so sarah before we wrap this up what would be your top uh points to make if you're looking to pitch a show, what are what, what do you need to follow? What's that framework? Brief inter- introduction, connector, hook, and then value. It's just okay. those three things. And I've never sent a pitch that was more than like a few sentences. Yeah. It should be really quick. It should be easy to read. But I think the biggest thing to focus on is going to be that value. And also noting the way that you're going to share that value. And this is one thing that I always do. I won't just say, I'd like to share my strategies. Okay. Because strategies are cool. That's great. But podcasting is about stories. So I'll say, I, like, I have strategies for doing this that I've used that have been successful. And I would love to share some of those stories and experiences that um, of how this has worked and how you can implement it. I always mention stories. Okay. That's super And cool. that is super, super key. Because podcast hosts, they're look, looking for value, but they're looking for stories. They're looking for people who can hold a conversation. And if right. you're answering questions with yes, no, okay. Oh, that's the worst. It's awful. Those yeah, episodes are not going to go to air. Yeah. And yeah that, that, that's one of those files that gets corrupted, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I'm so sorry. There's a problem with the audio. Yep, yep, yep. There's some hosts that will have you do a pre-call before okay. they let you on the show sure and we've done a few of them um often it's just because we want to get to know the person better we did one because um she we already knew she'd be a great guest but we wanted to kind of dig more into her like what she does as a business but some of them will do a pre-interview and i've been on those where we're 15 20 minutes in and they haven't asked me a single interview question <laughs> right and right. i've asked them like did was there anything like like you wanted to ask me, like, I feel like we've just kind of been talking. Like, I want to make sure that we get to your question. T- and they're like, oh, no, this is what I wanted. I wanted to make sure you could have a conversation. Wow. And we leave that call. Like, we're so excited for the for the recording. We sure. know it's going to be great because we already like we're already best friends. And I'm just like, I'm so excited to talk to you again. This is going to be great. We get on the recording and it's just like, oh, my God, it's so good to see you again. Like, this is going to be so much fun because we know we have that chemistry. We know we sure. have that connection. And they already know that I speak in stories and I don't give yes or no answers and I'm willing to share things. And that's really what we're looking for. So when you are pitching, make sure you just note that you're going to tell stories and have somewhere. I mean, with Podmatch, it puts it in the profile. Right. Uh, but, but if you have anywhere on your website, like a media kit or anything, have links to other podcasts that you've done or like videos that you've done that they can see like okay no they do know how to speak and they do speak in stories and they they're giving with their information well see i think that's cool too because you talked about a media kit Mm -hmm. and the media kit is where we have our one sheet or Mm -hmm. our bio or our resume or whatever it may be that's not the pitch that's that that's about you Yes. That's a separate piece of content that is not related to the pitch itself to get on a show. If we like your pitch, we will ask for your media kit. Exactly. Exactly. We don't need it yet. Save right on. That. We want to know about you. We want to know who you are. Right. But that's just not step one. 
That's like the second date. That's the third date. The yeah. first date, you just got to woo us. Like that, that is all you need. And a fun little like pro tip for this, and it's what I've been doing for ever, is if you have podcasts that you've already been on, whether they're your, it's your podcast or it's po- guest episodes, whatever, on Spotify, you can put all those on a playlist. Dude, that's the coolest. You, you do I, that so well. You do that I've so done this well. for other people. If you look at yeah. like my personal playlist, yeah. I have like Alea Harris podcasts. Yep. Um, yep. But make a playlist of your podcast yeah, episodes that you have done. And then you can embed that actual playlist on your website. And I do this on my media page. My I don't have like a physical media kit. I have a page on my website that is my media kit. Right. And right. at the bottom, there's the whole playlist is there. And you can see like, oh, she, not only like you don't even have to listen to them to know she's done a lot of podcasts. Right. So she's got to know what she's doing. I can click one, make sure like, OK, her audio sounds fine. Like clearly she has a microphone um, and her voice isn't annoying. And I know it is, but like you can pretend. Because um, <laughs> those are kind of the things that we look for. Like when you and I go through the pitches that we get. Yeah. Well, they they give like examples of episodes and we'll go and just make sure that we like the way that they present Definitely. themselves and the way that they speak and Definitely. we look to see are they using a microphone yep that's that's the first that's first and yep. fourth. and i know i may sound shitty today because i'm so far away from my mic but it's you sound better than a lot of them sophie's in between me and my mic so i <laughs> i just have to accommodate her today uh but but yeah 100 percent. we always look to see exactly how you sound and how you look on video mm-hmm. as well yeah. And with how you look, it's not about like appearances. It's not about no, like, no, no, no. we only let the pretty people on. No, like, you are, no, no. You are beautiful. Yes. Even if we don't, if we don't accept your pitch, you're still beautiful. It's yes. are you in a really messy, like lobby, but that's really noisy. Are Did right. you show up? Like, did you clearly put effort into just looking professional or are you showing up super messy? It's about the effort that you're putting in because we put so much effort into our shows. Yeah. We put so much effort into getting ready for them, planning the content, producing the content, getting it out, sharing it on social, creating assets for you to share it on social. And if you're just showing up, like you just rolled out of bed, you look a mess and you're talking into your like um, Apple earbuds, whatever they are. Very technical. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. They have a name. Ear ear pods. Maybe? AirPods. Yeah, that. There you go. And you're just talking okay. into your AirPods. Yeah. yeah. That's not, that makes our job harder with production and you're not putting any work and you're not putting effort in. Right. So right. we just want to see that you're going to put effort in. Yeah. Yeah. And that you care about the content you're creating with us. hundred percent. So, yeah, I mean, that's the bottom line is come, come to, you know, come to podcast prepared, prepared to represent you, prepared to represent your brand and understand that, you know, we take this in, entire form seriously and we hope you do too. Yeah. And we say that we still want you to have fun. We want it to be a good time, but just make, make it look like you put the effort in. And we just spent the last half hour making me sound so mean. And yeah. You're I'm, super aggressive and no one likes you. I mean, seriously, I, I, I'm yeah, this sorry guys. Rough. This episode I'm is so rough. I'm so sorry. I, I mean, love all of you. My feelings I, are hurt and I'm a co-host. I'm, I'm hurt <laughs> on the inside right now. I just, okay. I'm only, it's constructive criticism. I'm saying this because I want you to do better. I want yeah, you, no, I want 100%. you to be better at this. And I, cause yes. I want you to get on all the podcasts yes. that you pitch to. Yes. And I'm be my friend. I'm really nice. I really, I'm sorry. I, I, I adopted two rescue dogs. I'm, I donate <laughs> to charity sometimes. I'm sorry. And I have a dog in my lap, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with dogs too. Uh, but anyway, no, seriously, uh, we, th- this was a very, uh, we won't call it aggressive, but direct <laughs> episode. And I think, oh, I'm so sorry. So I just poked her in the eye. Uh, oh. But we have to be, we have to, we have to understand these things. And we don't hear this message very often. How do we pitch to really be effective and really get on podcasts? So uh, I think this episode was very constructive, uh, very informative. And I think a lot of people can learn how they can position themselves going forward so they get on more shows that not only benefit themselves but benefit the audience of the shows that they're on. And that's absolutely critical. So, and now Aaron. moving forward, if we yes. get some crappy pitches in our inbox, we know you don't actually listen to our show. So don't play yourself. Oh man. Don't play yourself. You done played yourself. 
<laughs> Holy shnikes, that was aggressive. Uh, but anyways, no, I love it. And uh, hopefully this was a very educational episode because, again, you don't hear this content very often. You know, you hear that you have to pitch, you have to get on podcasts, you need to get yourself out there, but you don't necessarily hear how to pitch. And Sarah did an amazing job at the uh, Badass Business Summit just last week. And we thought this would be extremely valuable for every one of you out there as well. So hopefully you found some value in this episode. I know you did. So if that's the case, please hit that subscribe button so we can continue to bring you these amazing episodes each and every week, even if they stay a little bit. And with that, I'm Larry Roberts. And I'm Sarah Lucy. We'll talk to you next week.